Hello everybody, this is Richard Cespedes and uh, I'm here with a video to talk about a conclusion that I've come to uh, realize and that is that um, in terms of telekinesis, what part of the brain is really deeply involved is to me from what I've done from my, what I realized from my research is that it's the motor cortex. That's the main thing that's the driving force of psychokinesis, you know, in terms of moving objects, the telekinesis. Uh, I think that the motor cortex of the brain, which is the top part, like right here, the center almost, um, that this whole kind of strip area, the top, is kind of uh, deeply involved with psychokinesis. And the main reasons are, uh, I'll give you three reasons why. Uh, from my from my research, uh, the biggest one is um, the in, the the intention the, the intentions. Uh, how um, your intentions is deeply involved with um, what you plan to do, like by reaching and everything. Um, scientists have found out that that with your intentions, you can. You can, uh, without even really having to move your arm, by just thinking about it and intending to grab an object and pick it up, your brain is already uh, developing a motor flexing. You know, it's it's neurologically flexing in the mind and in, in the motor area. It's already getting ready to reach and grab the cup. If you intend to, if you're thinking about and intending and feeling to pick up the cup, in your mind you already are picking up the cup. You know, that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons, intentions, is uh, th there's already activity going on in the motor cortex with just intentions alone reacting as if you're picking up the cup by uh, uh, activating the motors, you know, kind of like uh, revving them up a little bit without even actually initiating the grabbing of the cup with the arm. So there's already that going on in the brain and that's also what I also uh, that's one reason that's also similar to the mind's hand like I talked about in my other theories of how the brain works the, the mind of the hand is reaching and grabbing the mind is the hand the mind's hand is in here you know as much it is as much it is here and the other reason is my own theory is the uh, the occipital parietal junction which is the hand-eye coordination again it has to do with uh, the, the motor cortex and uh, that's right there is like the hand, the uh, the eyes coordinating with an object that's on a table, and and uh, and on a regular basis the hand eye coordination is hand coordinating to where you're gonna pick up the object, the target, and lifting it. So it's like a two things kind of coming together, kind of you know. And uh, it's like video games, hand eye coordination, you know, playing video games, staring at an object that's external from you and moving it. That is not your reality, but you're moving it. And that's the same thing. You're touching an object that isn't your reality, but it's external. It's not, it's not, uh, without touching it. That's hand eye coordination. Uh, that's a certain aspect similar. Telekinesis is using that same, um, uh, nature of that hand-eye coordination it's, it's in both their books very similar together telekinesis and actual hand-eye coordination of game playing or reaching and grabbing object in reality and the other reason the third reason is uh, what a lot of people don't speak about what I've discovered is uh, is the phantom limb thing whenever a person uh, like an amputee loses an arm um, they still feel as though the arm and hand is there. They can sense it and feel it. And and uh, they also feel as though because the motor cortex is sending out... Uh, if the motor cortex of uh, the arm is damaged, but the motor cortex is still active. And still feels as though uh, it, it, it's, um, it hasn't been registered to the motor cortex that the arm is gone. And that it should shut down. It just goes and goes and goes because it's not aware that the arm is gone. So it keeps on sending information to an amputee's arm to the space and it makes it seem as though the feeling of the arm and the fingers are there even though uh, half of the arm is gone from the elbow. And the brain uh, hasn't realized that it should shut down because that part of the body is gone and then there's, there's no use to be activating those uh, that part of the brain and so uh, that's another reason why there's a phantom limb thing and uh, telekinesis 
is similar to that because it's like we're using a phantom limb it, uh, the mind's the mind's arm the arm the mind's hand is a phantom limb kind of thing you know it's like it's an arm that we're not uh that we're not using that we've forgotten about that is a that uh that is kind of like an, it's uh, it's amputated due to uh um our own ignorance of our own self-awareness and consciousness it's an amputation a metaphor amputation metaphoric amputation of our own doing of our own ignorance of ourselves and the and and the, the ignorance of our of our universe and our worlds you know but we're realizing uh through uh psychokinesis where we're activating that part of the brain so now we're feeling that phantom arm we're feeling the arm as though it's there it's not really literally like an amputee but it is in in some ways there is a relation between those two things telekinesis my theory of the, the mind's hand and the actual person that has an amputee, the amputated arm. And people with amputated arms, they also complain about that they feel as though the arm is there and the hand is there, but that it's like all twisted and mangled in different places, so it feels uncomfortable. And what they do to treat that, it's like a, they get pain or something, what they do to treat that is that they actually um, go through the process of uh, a mirror box but we'll talk about that later i want to continue talking about the motor cortex the idea of motor phenomenon it is the idea of motor uh flexation kind of a um uh it's like uh it's like it has to do with intention it has to do with the same thing with intention like you're sending the information you want to move the object up like you have the table turning like it lifts up it floats and uh with intention you just have to touch the object and wanting to intend it for it to move and lift you can lift it up because the motor cortex is reacting as though uh the arms are lifting it but it's actually the arms and the mind are lifting it the mu muscles the uh, the the um the motor of the muscles arms activating is already being activated here so it activates first your arm stretching and your hand grabbing activates here first before you actually do it that's intention and so the ideal motor function, the uh, occipital parietal junction, the uh, the the basically the, the intentions and the phantom limb. Those are all four things that have to do with the motor cortex. And so those are the main things why I see that uh, the motor cortex. You know the other parts of the brain. Intention. Um, uh, I mean uh, anticipation. That's also using imagination. You're also using imagination to foresee and anticipate the object moving towards you, which also helps with telekinesis. So there's other parts of the brain that I've also spoken about in my other video about the psychokinesis helmet. The psychokinesis helmet, not psychokinesis. Um, um, but, because uh, I really take it seriously, but um, there's other parts of the brain that are active. Uh, but I think the motor cortex is the main heart and soul of psychokinesis right now. Maybe, maybe there's other parts of the brain that haven't really... I'm still re doing research on it, but I think the motor cortex is the heart of it. And uh, if I do a helmet, I'll be focusing more on those areas, maybe creating more flexations and intis and and, and uh, intentions, forcing intention of flexing and grabbing an arm, looking at an object without touching it and making it move. You know, so the helmet will be focusing things like that. So now we'll get into the mirror box. And what they do is that it has like a mirror in, in the center of a box with the lid off and two holes. So one goes into the left and one goes into the right hole. And the mirror is blocking both the view, you know, in the center. So uh, they do this exercise. I can't explain it. It's simple, but, you know, you put your hands inside. And if you lost your right arm, you just put your nub in there and you put this in there. And you look at it from an angle and it makes it seem as though... You have two full arms, two complete arms, or your other arm has been replaced. And so that kind of eases the pain of the amputee because it, it's an optical illusion that allows to relax the, the, uh, the neurological um, act, um, activity in the motor cortex, you know, relaxing it, making it realize, hey, you know, uh, you don't have to keep on sending this signal so fiercely you can relax now. So it's kind of like a therapeutic thing. But I also think that the mirror box can also be used to awaken 
and to uh, explore uh, telekinetic skill development. That maybe you could pretend as though your arm is gone, put your arm in there, and kind of pretend as you could you could uh, uh, have two same objects, put them in there, and then have one arm put in, and then one arm touching the other one, and uh, move the object with the hand that's still connected. You're just playing around, and you're just kind of like developing the skill of how to move an object. You know, because it looks like there's two hands, and that's what uh, helps the, the to uh, like a therapy for the people with the uh, amputees. And since only one hand is really touching, uh, the other one is not touching the cup, but only one hand is touching the cup, and the reflection of the mirror makes it seem like there's two hands touching one cup, or two hands touching two cups at the same time, following each other exactly. But you, in the mind, I think that that can activate. Um, an optical illusion, the optical illusion can activate the mind's hand in terms of telekinesis development to be able to move an object without touching it, you know, uh, to, to use your amputated arm to move an object without touching it. So it's kind of like maybe there could be something going on that we can use the mirror box for telekinesis skill development, I think. Says, please, thank you guys for watching.